originally a soldier in the U.S. Army. He was part of an experimental super soldier project where he gained enhanced strength, agility, and intelligence. His vendetta against the Teen Titans began when he swore revenge for the death of his oldest son, Grant. His other two children would go on to become Titan members. Additionally, his actions have been limited by a strong personal code of honor, although his motives became more villainous following the death of his wife, Adeline Kane. Through this time, his only steady companion is his loyal manservant, Major Wintergreen. The Super Soldier project he underwent enhanced his abilities to near superhuman web levels. Able to sink nine times faster and utilize that much more of his own mind than your average human for information processing and sorting. Deathstroke's mind is virtually a computer built for strategy and problem solving, one that works at an optimal le ability even when under stress and fatigue, as he apparently uses 90% of his brain. He is also ingenious in dividing solutions against superior aspects of opponents. He can observe and exploit, and can calculate distance, speed, and time at lightning speeds. His sense of timing is superb, bordering on perfection. Deathstroke possesses enhanced reflexes. The speed at which he reacts allows him to dodge fast-moving projectiles such as arrows, bullets, and even dodge Starfire's star bolts, which are fast enough to escape Earth's gravity. He can usually outreact even the fastest humans, no matter how well trained. Deathstroke can exert himself at peak capacity greater than any human could. For example, he once had a nuclear submarine blow up right on top of him, and he survived. His entire muscular system was hardened and fortified, making Deathstroke many times stronger than an average human, to the point of tearing off an airplane indoor and twisting steel with his bare hands. He can place his capability into his strikes, allowing him to augment the concussive force of his attack. His strength should be sufficient enough to press about a ton with relative ease. Deathstroke's senses have been augmented to heighten levels of function. He can perceive things better than a normal human. This includes, but is not limited to, enhanced hearing, enhanced sense of smell, and enhanced vision. With an already accelerated ability to heal damaged tissue, the rate at which Deathstroke's body recovers from injury and capable of being repaired before death. As such, Deathstroke's body can take a tremendous amount of punishment before succumbing to death. Simple gunshots and stab wounds, cuts, and broken bones can heal faster than normal. He was once impaled clean to the chest and it did nothing but slow him down and cause great pain. Deathstroke's regenerative abilities have some effect on his body's abilities to process through harmful foreign substances, and he has become naturally immune to deadly poisons and illnesses. Slade is a great strategist and tactician, always calculating his opponent's moves beforehand. He even single-handedly defeated the Justice League roster that lacked the Big Three. He has been compared to Batman in terms of tactical methods. Even against metahumans, he has proven more than a match for them all at once with time to prepare. Roy Harper once claimed that Slade was the world's greatest tactician. Using his superior problem-solving skills, Destro can work out a battle ahead of time for many possibilities and predict enemy movements and tactics after the battle has engaged. By recalling and utilizing memorized mannerisms acquired through past experience on the moment's notice. They trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and when he was in the army, he proved himself to be one of the best fighters. Later he received martial arts training in various titles. After mastering these martial arts, he furthered his studies when he sought an assassin known as Nadas to train him in the ways of ninja, and had studied assassination techniques. His physical prowess is so great that he has defeated Batman in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Deathstroke's armor is made out of promethium mesh. 
Promethium is capable of generating and absorbing near limitless amounts of energy, making it incredibly resistant to conventional injury. Deathstroke is a highly trained swordsman. He is able to dual wield a pair of katanas and to use them with deadly accuracy and almost superhuman speed. His favorite swords to wield are the Promethium Sword, a long blade made out of Promethium Metal, and the Energy Lance. Among other things, Deathstroke has been shown to carry a specially designed multi-million dollar flash bomb, capable of incapacitating the entire Justice League, including Superman. Although it only lasts long enough for him to make an escape, despite what you just heard, Deathstroke has notable weaknesses. He is blind in one eye. He still can die, and he still can feel pain. But his strengths definitely outweigh his weaknesses. Beware Deathstroke, the Terminator. The world was entering World War II, and American patriots all over the country were recruited into fulfilling the duty and joined the ruthless battle against Hitler's onslaught. Among those that were willing to protect their country and bring the war to an end was a young patriot named Steve Rogers, who had more than a fair share of courage and heart to enter the military. But since he has none of the physique, he was turned away several times on behalf of his fever, chronic colds, sinusitis, high blood pressure, diabetes, lack of stamina, lack of muscular body mass. In short, he had a long ways before he could battle anyone, and it would take a miracle for him to actually participate in the war. Personally, and as fates would want it, a miracle came, and his name was Dr. Abraham Erskine. He saw potential in Lil Steve's heart, and they offered him to turn him into a complete new man through the so-called Project Reaper which included injecting Steve with a mysterious super soldier serum that, that has science in it and exposing him to probably lethal doses of Vita rays. With science and against all odds, the experiment was a complete success as Dr. Erskine turned Lil Steve into the world's first super soldier who arrived just in time to combat Hitler's latest elite force named Hydra. While it took some paperwork and a dozen commercials for the promotion of anti-Nazi campaigns, Steve eventually came to the battlefield as a big, mean, Nazi-kicking machine. Taking a new role and a new identity as war progressed, Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, has proven his worth and led the American troops to one victory after another. Overthrowing the Hydra and greatly turning the tide of war, until he ended up frozen in ice after an unfortunate plane crash, only to be sought out decades later and joining up with the newly formed Avengers as their official leader, command in keeping justice and order and beating up bad guys in the American way. The super soldier serum Steve got injected with puts his body beyond the limits of human physique making him twice as strong and over three times as fast as the record-holding human athlete, as well as granting him immense durability, enhanced data processing powers, and a limited healing factor. He can bench press over half a ton, although he was said to be able, in Nick Fury's words, bench press a Toyota, uh, I mean car, which, ha as a reminder, can weigh over two and a half thousand pounds. He is fast enough to keep pace with a speeding car, dodge bullets from point blank, and even sync and process information at a much greater speed than a normal human. This accelerated brain function in turn speeds up the rest of his body and makes him an ingenious tactician. Another one of Captain America's traits is his tremendous immunity to most pathogenic influences such as toxins, venoms, and even brainwashing. Although the constant requirement for re-injection of the Super Soldier Serum is replenished by Steve's body itself, which secretes the serum constantly. And as his muscles do not produce lactic acid, usually responsible for causing muscular fatigue, he can theoretically fight indefinitely without getting tired. 
So it's not without reason that Steve was appointed as the leader of the Avengers. With his superb leadership skills and a sense for strategy, he can lead his team to do battle against impossible odds, and topped it all off with his own personal variety of martial arts, combining the arts of kickboxing, gymnastics, and judo into his own personal fighting style. Although in theory, he is adept to many other forms of fighting, including Krav Maga and Ninjutsu. And get this, from fighting alongside allies such as Iron Fist, the Cap has even learned a few key-based attacks. Well, not exactly Hadouken level, but still impressive to a degree. As a super soldier, Steve Rogers can pilot pretty much any kind of vehicle and handle as good as any kind of firearm. But as he's a fossil from the World War II era, he's most comfortable with simple handguns. That is, if he ever really needs to use one, because he generally prefers to sell things close and personal, which may involve the use of either his fists or the trademark shield that he carries. Captain America's shield is a marvelous tool. Used for both defense and offense, is virtually indestructible and has blocked various attacks over the years, ranging from bullets, lasers, and even endured the slam from Thor's million ton hammer. The reason why the shield is so, so durable is because of the materials it's made of, which is a combination of adamantium, the toughest material in the whole Marvel Universe, and vibranium, a unique substance from space. Vibranium carries most of the shield's unique properties, and because of it, the shield does not conduct heat nor electricity, and most importantly, it can absorb any kind of energy like a sponge, making it nearly impenetrable. A smaller portion of the same substance is also put to reinforce Cap's armored suit, putting aside cosmic energies and powers that manipulate matter on a molecular level, there are officially only three things capable of destroying vibranium. A nuclear impact, more vibranium, and the Incredible Hulk. Because the shield absorbs pretty much all of the kinetic energy it creates by moving, it can be thrown for great distances and ricochet between targets with only minimal loss of velocity. Because of this, one of Cap's trademark moves includes throwing the shield around like some kind of Justice Frisbee and because he can calculate its trajectory regardless of distance and ricocheting it reaches, he can always predict exactly where the shield is going to land, so it always ends up back in his hand. Although there were others that occasionally used the shield, it is by far the most devastating when wielded by Captain America himself. The shield thrown by Steve can reach speeds over Mach 20 overtaking ballistic missiles. If the shield just so happens not to be enough, the uniform Captain America wears likewise provides him with notable degrees of protection. The suit covers his body with several layers, including Kevlar, Nomex, lightweight titanium, and even vibranium, albi in much lower quantities providing altogether a medium degree of protection against heat, electricity, impact, and sharp traumas. But the degree of protection is limited. He has been severely injured by projectiles, bullets, and blades more than a few times. While the vibranium in his shield does make it notably resistant, there is a downside to it. The massive amounts of energy the shield has absorbed over the years eventually did lead to it being severely damaged, and it was even destroyed on a few occasions, although by notably powerful cosmic entities and matter manipulating enemies. And every time the shield got damaged, it got fixed better than before. One time by Tony Stark's tech, another time it was given to an Asgardian to up on Sword's request. Despite being superhuman, the Cap is not exactly invincible, but he is difficult to deal with. He shares the same physical weaknesses as a normal human being and was taken down by several opponents during his long career as a soldier and leader of the Avengers, and any enemy with the same degree of martial arts skills can possibly overpower him. His most notable failure in life was losing the life of his faithful partner Bucky to the villainous Baron Zemo 
an event that scarred Steve deeply in flashbacks to the event do tend to haunt him, especially since Bucky later came back as the Winter Soldier to kick his patriotic rear. So yeah, he does have his fairest share of bad guys, like the time when a brainwashed S.H.I.E.L.D. agent killed the ERM. But the feats he accomplished in his lifetime as an Avenger are still remarkable. He fought and even defeated several of Marvel's most potent characters, such as Thor and the Incredible Hulk, and gave the mighty Galactus a sucker punch to the face. He is one of the few people that Thor, in his god narcissistic will nature, willingly decided to obey, was deemed worthy to wield Mjolnir. Thor's enchanted mallet and even Thor's, encha Thor's enchanted mallet and even escaped death by traveling back in time in his mind or something like that. Look, he's Captain Freaking America. Of course he's going to be he cool. Ain't nobody handling the ca the American dream better than Steve Rogers. So why did Deathstroke win? Well it's simple. Captain America may have been stronger and faster than Deathstroke, but Deathstroke easily outclassed the Captain in almost every other way. Since there is a huge difference between what these soldiers can do in the gym from what they perform on the field of battle. While well, Captain America took a bullet in the gut and nearly died, Slade endured shots to the head multiple times, and that's only an easy feat. He once had a nuclear submarine thrown upon him, which then exploded on top of him, and he survived. His healing factor and multi-layered armor also gives him a greater endurance than the cap. Steve Rogers can throw his shield at speeds that rival intercontinental missile. But Slade has evaded much faster projectiles in the past, most notably Starfire Starbolts, which are fast enough to escape Earth's gravity. Steve may be familiar with a handful of fighting styles, but Deathstroke has fought and defeated Batman, who has likewise mastered every martial art known to man. So there's no reason to think Captain America would pass any better. Another feature that secures Deathstroke's victory is his ability to process information much faster and outsmart enemies, a feat not even Steve Rogers with his fasting brain can cope with. But most importantly, the problem in this fight is Captain America's symbolism. He is a living symbol of liberty and unity, and as such can unite and lead heroes better than any other Marvel superhero. This also means he is often backed up in various missions by his team, the Avengers. But unfortunately for him, Deathstroke takes and completes all his assignments personally. Looks like this super soldier was not super enough. The winner is Deathstroke.